Welcome back to Hero the Goldberg. Today we'll be talking about The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Frickle Frackle by Mark Manson. This was a book that for a long time I saw, it was recommended, but I just thought, eh, it's going to be another generic self-improvement type text with a lot of extra vulgarity thrown in. I'm not a fan of that. Well, it turns out I was wrong in many respects. It is a vulgar book. However, his message is a lot more inventive and I would say practical than most of the content you're going to stumble across, whether it is uh, in the mainstream realm, manosphere, whichever you please, religious, because he has an unorthodox approach. So as far as who Mark Manson is, for a time he operated a PUA business, traveling the world, and he wrote this book, which is quite successful, has over like 2,000 positive reviews on Amazon, but he said... That lifestyle was very unsatisfying because he was just chasing empty validation for women. He didn't have much money, mooching off of other folks, and just in general, not terribly happy as a human being. So eventually he moved on, married a supermodel, and they got into more of this mainstream, in some sense, existential self-improvement writing. Uh, and he has this book, and then also I think one called Everything's frickle frackled, which I have not checked out quite yet. One of the most important aspects of this book is how Manson deconstructs the popular idea of positivity. Because you'll see these gurus and they say, you got to be positive. Always maintain that attitude. Always be looking to uh, the end goal. And that's fine. But as he explains, sometimes when you have this rabid fixation on positivity, it can make you less happy. Let's say you uh, join a gym because you want to get in shape and you start lifting weights, and you look around you and you see that so many of the other guys there, whether it's because they've been uh, doing it longer, or they have better meal prepping skills, or maybe they just have better genetics so they put on muscle faster, and you start feeling inadequate based upon what those other people have accomplished, regardless of the way they got there. Just like when you get on social media, oh yeah, I'm pretty good, but I'm not good enough, because we fixate on exceptionalism, as he says in the United States, to where no one can just be successful as average. You have to be super rich with your app that you created. You have to be an online celebrity. You have to have the best car, otherwise you're a loser. And of course, in the self-improvement community, they're constantly telling you, yeah, keep doing it, keep doing it. And if it doesn't work, keep doing it, keep doing it. That's because you have to keep the customers on the dole. Strangely enough, a guy like Mark Manson, you read this book and you say, well, okay, maybe the Bukowski lifestyle is okay. Maybe you can be uh, just a, a random bum for most of your life, and you could become successful, or on the other hand, you might not. Now, this fixation on positivity can be immensely destructive to the lives of men, because you take the popular social opinion, and a dude experiences pain. Suck it up. Be a man. Be positive. Well, many a dude will do that his entire life. Suppress, 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 and then it will flare up in the form of rage pilling, anger, sometimes violence. Those might be useful if you're a boxer or a prison guard or maybe like a mercenary overseas, but otherwise it can get you in a lot of trouble, whether it comes to relationships or the workplace. So it's not to say never be positive, be like a doomer cell, but be willing to confront those emotions even on a personal basis so you know what they're like, and then you can actually start making progress and improving your station. And so this brings us to the point of the book where Manson discusses how folks will pledge loyalty to particular causes without always considering how much value it has in their own life. So he mentions Hiru Onoda, was this Japanese soldier that after World War II had ended, absolutely refused to accept defeat, said he would remain loyal to the emperor. And for like, you know, three decades about, he was on this Pacific island living in a sort of a guerrilla manner, attacking people, taking food, living off of you know, the flora and the fauna, because he didn't want to sacrifice that image. Well, eventually this adventurer guy finds him, brings him back to Japan, and he said he became disgusted because the old fuel Japan was gone. The women were walking around in miniskirts, the dudes are all embracing Western capitalism. So Unoda just says, screw it, I'm going to live in Brazil. And that's where he spent the rest of his life. So what Manson's saying is, yeah, you could look at Unoda's story and say that's really amazing that he dedicated all that time, he believed so much of his life in a cause. 
but the bulk of the population, even in Japan, had just moved on. So was it worthwhile for him to dedicate so much time to that idea? And I should note, I mean, if you've read like Yukio Mishima's Patriotism, the Japanese conception of loyalty and duty is very emotionally touching, okay? You, I, I just, my advice, you want to read that book, it's probably going to have a big impact on you. But in more of a your life, your destiny, your values, was that the best thing for him to do or should he have just come back home and done what he felt was best at that point? It's a difficult question. But what Manson says is, you have to come to the conclusion of, is this what I really like and believe in or am I simply doing it because other folks are coming along or they've actually gone before me? And we see this a great deal. Like some people will go, oh, Goldberg's negative. And it's not negative or positive. It's a question of, can you draw yourself back from the issue to where you don't start becoming angry or even masochistic? In 2014, 2015, I became such a, an avid consumer of news. And I would go to forums, even people I didn't like, and just read the comments and start being irritated and whatnot. And you're saying, does it really matter? Like, you want to cast a vote, fine. If you want to be an activist, go knock on doors, whatever. But to just be a spectator and get so irritated and spend your energies on that, you really have to say, do I believe in this or am I simply jumping on the bandwagon? To give you an idea of how quickly people's opinions change, in like 2013, 2014, Manosphereans were saying, enjoy the decline, Obama's been reelected, everything's done. Then Trump comes on the scene, Trump's going to save the West. When Trump, at least de facto, lost the election in 2020, some people say it was fraud, some people say no, there were a lot of folks who couldn't accept it because they had tied their own destiny and sense of self-worth to Trump remaining president. So that's why they kept saying, oh, the, the, we're going to have the court, we're going to have the audit, and then you saw what happened a couple months ago. Many of these people were true believers, even though, in the end, he didn't pardon them. Just like he didn't lead the charge. Most of the people who are at the top of these organizations or causes, they're not the ones actually sacrificing themselves. You never see a, uh, you didn't see like a Democrat joining the cause, like Schumer smashing windows during the riots last year. Just like you don't see, uh, you didn't see Osama bin Laden or Khomeini strapping themselves with explosives. It was, it was always the younger guys or the dudes who were about to be caught that would do that. So when you step back a bit and you say, okay, I can have an idea, an ideology, but I don't have to essentially fall on my sword for this thing to feel like I've got purpose. There's more to life. And that's my approach. Like I like studying politics. I like reading about it, writing about it, but I don't need to feel like, oh my God, if you know this election goes this way, I'm just going to be completely miserable. On that subject of unhappiness, he says, if you basically hold other people responsible for your own misery, you will never be happy. And yeah, it's true. There might be a case like your kid gets killed by a drunk driver. You're angry at the drunk driver. But even just in general, you see how people go around. They're always like, oh, it's the unvaccinated that are ruining my life, or it's the liberals, or it's the conservatives ruining my life. And you're saying, at a certain point, you have to figure out, do you want to be happy? And how are you going to find that happiness? Because waiting until the entire uh, apparatus or whole society moves into your direction, that's probably not going to occur. That's why, going back to politics, maybe it's overused, but if you're a libertarian, instead of just raging about the central bank all the time, maybe find a way to live off grid where you don't have to be as dependent on the infrastructure. That's true freedom in a lot of respects. If you're a socialist, join or start a cooperative, which exists already in the United States, and that allows you to really have a cause that keeps you busy and gives you more purpose, allows you to connect with people. If you're an ethnic nationalist, instead of just sitting there making, you know, frog meme comments and complaining, go out, find someone, and it's going to be difficult, we know this, but go out and find someone, maybe have six or eight kids. That's more about you actually taking charge, having purpose, and doing something that you're going to extract some sense of satisfaction from instead of just sitting there like, oh, I can't believe these liberals are ruining it or I can't believe these conservatives are ruining my life. It's not to say there's no, uh, there's no role for activism, there's no role for being part of something bigger, but just don't make it like, oh, I'm going to sink or swim on the basis of this because you will probably be disappointed and you will probably 
lose a lot of your life just waiting for that big moment instead of saying, I'm going to strike out and do whatever I can, whatever I want to do based upon my own values. And that's where I'm going to find some sense of happiness. So I do recommend checking out this book. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit vulgar, but that's not the end of the day. It's got great meaning in it. And I think you'll find it more useful than the run-of-the-mill pickup, or I shouldn't say pickup, but really self-improvement text.